I'm Maddie. I've just been to the shops and I'm back with all the things I bought. <laughs> now, where is my key? Oh, there we go. There it is. This key helps me lock and unlock the front door. It's really clever. All I do is push it in this little hole called a keyhole. And as I turn the key, the door unlocks and it opens, just like magic. But it's not. Do you know how a lock works? How does it work? A lock and key. Can you see that when I turn the key, this bit of metal goes in and out? This is called the deadbolt. And when the door is locked, the deadbolt goes into this slot in the door frame so that it won't move when I go to open it. But when the door is unlocked, the deadbolt moves out of this slot and the door can open once again. But do you know what happens inside the lock? How does the key make the deadbolt move in and out? Let's find out, shall we? I've got three different locks here, but they all work in the same way. Why don't we use my special camera to take a closer look and see how they work? This is the key. And this bit is the keyhole. The key goes into the keyhole and into a tube. And the tube is called a barrel. Now, when you turn the key inside the barrel, this bit, the deadbolt, moves in and out. Can you see that? And it's the deadbolt that locks the door. This lock and key is just like the one on the front door, but it's useful because we can see what's going on inside it. Great, isn't it? But what's really clever is that this lock will only work with this key. No other key will turn this lock. So what is it that makes this key so special? If you look closely, you can see the key has lots of lumps and bumps, and these bumps are sometimes called teeth. They look a bit like teeth, don't they? The teeth on keys are all different, and they come in all shapes and sizes. So, how do the teeth help work the lock? When you put a key in a lock, it goes through the keyhole and into the metal tube called the barrel. Inside the barrel are lots of little metal pins, and each of these pins has a special position. As the key goes in, the teeth on the key push the pin down, and the pins then pin back into the gaps. Only if the pins are in their special position will you hear click. This means you can turn the key, which makes the deadbolt move out to lock the door. Or in, which unlocks the door so it can be opened. So these are all the teeth on my key and some are longer than others. Can you see? Now, I want to see these teeth inside the special lock. Now, as the key goes in, can you see that the teeth are making the pins move up and down? Can you hear that? I love the sound of those pins clicking into their special positions. And once the pins are in the special position, I can now turn the key, which moves the deadbolt in and out, just like that. But the really clever thing is that every lock is different and the only key that will open this lock is this one. If I try to use the front door key in this lock, look, it doesn't work. And that's because the only door this key will open is the front door. Amazing. I think locks and keys are so clever. Do you? What was your favorite bit about seeing how they worked? Remember what the lumps and bumps on a key are called. That's right, T. 
teeth. Did you hear the sound of the pins clicking into their special positions? And did you see the deadbolt moving in and out as the key was turned? There are locks and keys all over this house. Let's see if we can find some. Here's one on my secret drawer. Here's one on the window handle. It's much smaller than the key for the front door, isn't it? Can you see how different the teeth are? <laughs> Even the garden doors have a lock. I like looking out into the garden, although it's a bit cold today. <laughs> Do you know what this is? Yes, it's glass. Glass is incredible because you can see through it. So even though it's a chilly day, I can see into the garden without getting cold. But do you know how glass is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Glass. There's something here that's used to make glass. Do you know what it is? It's something I'm playing with. Can you guess? It's sand. Yes, sand is the thing you need to make glass. The same stuff you used to build sand castles with. But do you know how sand is made into glass? Let's find out. Inside this glass factory, sand is turned into glass. The glass makers here create vases to put flowers in, colourful bottles and lots of different glass shapes called ornaments. All these lovely glass objects start out like this. They look like little rocks, don't they? Well, they are. They're little rocks made of sand mixed with chemicals which turns them into white pebbles. But how does this turn into something beautiful like this? the glass maker, and he puts our sandy pebbles into a very hot oven called a kiln. It's so hot, I have to stand way away from it. Can you see the fire inside? That's what's making it so hot. The sandy pebbles stay in the kiln for a whole night where they get hot and melt. The sand has got so hot it's changed completely. It's turned from sand into glass. But it's not like the glass in your windows quite yet. This is molten glass and at this stage it's runny like honey. What you can see is red because it's so hot, but when it cools down, it will become clear like the glass in your windows. But how does Bruce turn all that molten glass into something as beautiful as this? First, Bruce needs to make the coloured pieces that make the patterns on the vase. So, he heats up some blue glass to make it soft and then he blows into a long metal pole called a blowpipe, which makes the glass fill up with air like a balloon. This is called glass blowing. He's going to blow it so it's very, very thin. And that means he can smash the balloon into hundreds of tiny pieces of blue glass. Glass is very dangerous once it's broken, so you should never touch or go near it. Bruce has special tools to do it safely. With the coloured bits ready, it's time to make the vase. So the next thing Bruce does is gather some of the runny glass onto the end of his pipe. Bruce dips it into the broken pieces of glass and this will make the blue blobs of colour on our vase. Listen to that. It's like the sound of a crunching crisp packet. He then puts it back into the kiln. Look at that, can you see the blue glass shrinking? 
The kiln is so hot, the blue pieces are melting into the hot, sticky glass on the end of the pole. Bruce then adds more colour to our vase. We've got some green, blue, pink and even some red spots. I've got my special camera with me so we can see all of the colour that's been added to the glass in detail. Wow, can you see those colours? Don't they look pretty? At the moment, the glass just looks like a sticky blob, but we want it to become a nice round shape. So how do you think Bruce is going to do that? colour is added, Bruce dips it back into the kiln to add another layer of runny glass. To make the vase round, he uses a special tool called a wooden block. And then he blows down into the pipe to make it bigger. The glass is the right size, but to get it the shape we want, we have to flatten it. And to do that, Bruce rubs it onto a piece of cork, which is a type of wood. But the glass is so hot, the wood sometimes catches fire. Can you see? This is very dangerous, but Bruce has been specially trained to do it. The vase is finished, but it's still very hot, which is why it's so red. It's left to cool down for a few days, and then we'll be able to see its colours properly. And after three days cooling down in the kiln, this is our final piece. A wonderful glass vase. Look at the beautiful colours. I loved seeing how glass was made. Did you? What was your favourite bit? Can you remember the name of the long pole that was used to make the glass? That's right, it's called the blowpipe. Did you hear the crunchy sound made by the runny glass being dipped into the broken pieces? And did you see all those colours in the vase? Weren't they pretty? So the next time you see a beautiful glass ornament or look out of a window, remember that all glass comes from sand. It's getting a bit chilly. Let's shut the door. And now you know how a lock works too, with a key and its special teeth. See you next time. There are lots of things.